Mr. Okranian also not to be discussed in detail, but just to give some clues for you. Uh, the bones which make up uh, this, this part of the skull are the two nasal bones, making the body back of the nose here. Uh, the two lacrimal bones follow on the medial wall of the orbit. After that, the maxillae, one and two maxillae, uh, and as well as uh, making a complete curve together with the frontal bone. The zygomatic bones are the next. The zygoma means this uh, tool held on the neck of the animals. This yoke in English is called. Inferior nasal concha is hardly visible because from the lateral wall of the nasal cavity hangs into the nasal cavity. This is the inferior nasal concha. Uh, concha is shell, something like a shell-like uh, shape it has got. And the palatine bone, which completes the palate, the hard palate on the back side, therefore in this picture you cannot see it. Uh, the ampere bones are the ethmoid bone in the middle, just you can imagine because it is again hidden within the nose, but you can see some silhouettes of this bone, midline structure. The other bone is the vomer, completely or rather this uh, reddish line represents it because it is part of the nasal, uh, uh, body nasal septum, but the back side is formed by this bone, and the mandible is clearly visible, this is the lower jaw, and that is the biggest of the armpit bones of the skull. The things which were not seen before are to be discussed, the ethmoid I mentioned to you, this is a midline bone here, and this ethmoid bone uh, could be simplified as a cross, uh, be, be, uh, made up of a vertical part and a horizontal part. And this horizontal part is the thing which closes this ethmoid notch of the frontal bone and therefore contributes to the floor of the inferior cranial fossa. This one is called cribriform plate. And the cribriform plate uh, 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 transmits the very delicate uh, File, olfactory filae responsible for the olfaction and altogether these filae are called the first cranial nerve, the olfactory nerve. From this horizontal part uh, several uh, fine bony plates hang down which uh, split and contain again air filled spaces and these air filled spaces all communicate with the nasal cavity Therefore, they equal to a paranasal sinus again, uh, which together, the, the, the simple uh, cavities are called cells, ethmoidal air cells. All together, the sum of them equals to the ethmoidal sinus. So that is paranasal sinus as the frontal and the maxillary was before. <coughs> the vertical part of the bone, uh, of the cross, either extends into the anterior cranial fossa, this is called gallium crest, crystal gully, or makes the anterior uh, superior part of the bony nasal septum. The other bone is the vomer. This is a plum, plum. This is the vomer because of the shape of it. So this also all only has got one wing on the top, spread into two halves, and that attaches to the sphenoid rostrum. So the bone itself makes the posterior inferior part of the bony nasal septum. And the last thing is the uh, palatine bone, not visible before, an L-shaped bone having perpendicular and horizontal processes. The horizontal perpendicular contributes to the lateral wall of the nasal cavity, uh, just before the end of it, and the horizontal plate to the posterior part of the uh, body uh, palate. One uh, example is taken out of the uh, several bones of the visceral cranium, and that would be the maxilla. Uh, big divisions are body and four processes. The body should be simplified into a tetraedal shape. It means that having four walls, all uh, resembling to a triangle, four triangular walls. These walls in the lateral view, medial view, and superior view, you can see the bone, the separate bone. One is more or less palpable underneath the skin of the cheek. This one is the anterior surface of the body of maxilla. One horizontal plate faces the orbit and forms the floor of it, therefore it is called orbital surface. One is almost missing because there is a huge cavity on it, and this forms part of the 
uh, lateral wall of the nasal uh, cavity. This one is a nasal surface, therefore. And finally, there is one surface which faces to the back, facing the infratemporal fossa, and that one is called the infratemporal surface, therefore. The processes are, one, this big, biggest of the processes, uh, projecting upward. This one makes a connection with the uh, maxillary process of the frontal bone, that is called frontal process. The other process is the one which connects with the zygomatic bone, and this one is called the zygomatic process. One process makes the anterior bigger part of the body palate, so it is horizontal in reality, and because it contributes the palate should be called palatine process. And the last process is the curved uh, half of the U or half of the horseshoe paraboloid part uh, accommodating the, all the upper teeth. And because the teeth are in other sockets, the sockets are called alveoli, and therefore this one is the alveolar process of the bone. Okay, every minor detail is uh, further to be studied. Uh, one, uh, if you want to discuss the one surface of the maxilla, the more complex medial surface, it has got a big, huge hole. The hole leads into the biggest paranasal sinus. This sinus is the maxillary sinus, or name of the hymo is the hymus sinus. And uh, this opening, the maxillary hiatus, is not the real connection between the sinus and the nasal cavity itself. Uh, but it is narrowed by three consecutive bones, anterior superiorly by ethmoid, anterior inferiorly by the inferior nasal concho, and posteriorly by the palatine bone. And the final opening after narrowing this huge hiatus is called the aperture of the maxillary sinus. The location is extremely important. Uh, the aperture is extremely close to the roof on the medial wall of the sinus and it bears the medical importance of it. If inflammation happens, then the uh, product, the pus, should gradually should fill the maxillary sinus before it gets released into the nasal cavity. So therefore it is kept inside uh, and if uh, the inflammation is uh, chronic inflammation, then one way of curing this is to insert a needle through this fine bony plate of the nasal surface to, uh, close to the floor of the sinus and injecting fluid containing uh, uh, antibiotics making a circle and turbulent stream of the fluid and the fluid leaves the sinus somewhere at the aperture of the maxillary sinus. Another example I want to give you briefly, extremely briefly, how to uh, talk about the orbit. It's a separate uh, topic of, of the final exam. Don't care about the abbreviations here, just for keen people I made them uh, uh, visible or understandable at the bottom. So to begin, you should tell that uh, the orbit resembles the four-sided pyramid. Therefore, one side is the superior wall made out of these body structures, doesn't matter now, it has lateral wall consisted of these structures, has got an inferior wall, the floor, and has got a lateral wall and the components you can read here. Also it must have one inlet, and that is the beginning of the four-sided pyramid, and you must be able to list the components of the inlet. Here you should list seven of those. Okay, as well as has got one opening at the tip of the pyramid, and this was the one already mentioned optic canal. So this is how to study, uh, and please study. So good, good success for everyone. Thank you for the attention.